Before we begin, I would ask that all cell phones be turned off. At this time, would you please rise? Graduates and guests, would you please move your caps to the plane of our national anthem? Of our own class, 
Our superintendent even mentioned the noteworthy character of this specific group. Individually, many of the class of 2014 have already achieved so much in such a short period of time. For example, in Washington, D.C., you will soon be able to find the artwork of one of our own being proudly in the capital. Some of the students before me have been accepted to Ivy League schools, and others will be playing collegiate level sports in the fall, such as baseball, cross country, and soccer. Some have chosen to serve our country by enlisting in armed forces or pursuing ROTC. In an effort to change the world, Linden students have traveled globally to make an immense impact on the lives of others. From mission trips to South Africa, Haiti, Jamaica, Kentucky, and even a student starting a journey around the world next year, you will find Linden grads doing good almost anywhere in the world. One of our own will even be across the pond at the University of Manchester. Other students have acquired skills that will enable them to start their careers right away through CNA petition or pharmacy technician license. Most importantly, we all have the shared success of becoming high school graduates today. For many, achieving a diploma is a thing they might not have dreamed of years or months ago. Each one of us has been through personal struggles that made our road to achievement difficult, yet we persevered. Together, we have experienced triumphs and tragedies. And it is not possible to sit here today without taking a moment to remember the individuals that cannot be with us. One of whom could be in the seats next to us, and many that would be in the stands cheering us as we walk across the stage. Our class has experienced many heartbreaks that have taught us lessons in grief and to cherish the day that we have been given. By realizing our goals like we are today, we can honor those that we have lost and make them truly proud. It is clear that our class has already accomplished so much, and it is my hope that they will continue their own distinctive journey. When we enter high school, we have the same set of instructions to graduate. Yet we all complete this task in ways unique to our own characteristics. When you leave the school this afternoon, remember the memories, experiences, and skills that make you unique. Whether this means pursuing a passion by continuing your education in a specific field, starting a career that excites you, to developing your faith, do not deny yourself the ability to fully explore what it lies. You are in charge of your own happiness, and no single person can tell you how to live your life to make it the most fulfilling. As Maya Angelou wisely reminded us, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. So impact the world in a way that makes it greater, or learn to accept that you cannot change its grace. Her simple yet difficult to follow philosophy on life will ensure you achieve happiness. So go make a difference. The power to subtract even the lofty schools is clearly within each and every one of you. Look at what you have accomplished so far. So don't wait for someone else to change the world when the ability to do so is within you. The people gathered here today, your family, friends, faculty, and community members, have supported us for so long because they believe in all of your ability to succeed. With the responsibility in your hands now, the only question left is
Thank you very much. Please help me welcome an extraordinary young lady, the valedictorian for the class of 2014, Miss Sydney Elmer. Oh, 
Thank you very much, Sandy. At this time, I would like to introduce the Linden High School Ensemble, directed by Mr. John Bennett as they perform Breakaway, arranged by Alan Billington.
again, thank you, seniors, and thank you, Mr. Bennett. Now I would like to take the time to introduce the superintendent for Lennon Community Schools, Mr. Ed Khalil.
classmates, your family and friends, your teachers, the adults in your life who you have impacted as much as they have impacted you, whether you want to believe that or not. Capture this image of the classmates and cherish it hold it dear into your heart. Family and friends in your memory will always be there to remember this day. We congratulate you on the new graduates. Go on and do great things. You've been empowered, you've had the ability. Now make a difference in the world. God bless all of you. God bless the class.
the tax information. And when you work uh, with kids, a lot of times you have to get background checks to make sure they're not hiring a former felon. And so I had to get my fingerprints taken. And so I went in and I was there with the business administrator. And she said, you know, the police station is just two blocks down the road. When you get down here, you can take this little cardboard sheet, go to the police station, and they will fingerprint you so we can background check. I said, that's great. We'll do it. And so I get the cardboard sheet. Now, the way that the church was set up, there was a giant parking lot that you had to walk around or walk through to get to the police station. And so I'm there and I have a bottle of water and I have the cardboard and I have my phone. I have a very, this is free iPhone. So this is very, you know, ancient times. Uh, the $500 phone and I think to myself, I should call some of the students that I will give you, you direct for. See if they want to get lunch. They have big pool guys that like hangs out with them. And so I'm walking and I call one of the kids. And I'm walking in the grass and to get to the sidewalk, to go to the police station, I have to cross the uh, parking lot. And I looked at it, this place is pristine, this parking lot is so shit, it's gorgeous. It was a beautiful day. And there I am, and I call and talk to one of the kids, and I go to walk across the parking lot, and the first step onto the parking lot, my feet went out from underneath me, I was horizontal to the ground like a cartoon. Everything in my hands went up in the air, and I landed in lava hot tar. That morning they had resurfaced the parking lot. Hence the beauty. Without telling the new guy, I quickly scrambled and grabbed my phone. I said, dude, I gotta call you back. <laughs> and then I thought, what do I do? I am in tar. I am 45 minutes from my house and I don't know anybody that lives in this town. And so I went, well, I gotta get up. And so I went to stand up. And of course, it was so slippery, I fell right back down and did it again. And so I had to army crawl one arm through the tar to get off. I'm in the grass, I'm trying to quick up, quickly think of my feet, and I'm in front of the pastor's house. I met the pastor, okay? And so I'm like, maybe he's home, and maybe he can help me with something. And so I walk up and I ring the doorbell. The pastor's not home, his wife is. His wife answers the door, she looks at me and says, oh my God! And I said, first things first, I need to get the tar off this $500 phone. Priorities. And so she sat there on the phone with her friend's uh, husband, who was an engineer. And she took 20 minutes and got the tar off the phone. Didn't ruin it, because I sat there and the tar started to harden on my arm hair and leg hair and on my clothes. And so then she comes up and she lays out towels to walk from the front door. She's not going to have to walk on the floor. I walk on towels to get to the bathroom. And at first she brings me soap and shampoo and wash them. Looks like I did the tar. So eventually she brings me a uh, group. Familiar with goop? That's the, that's the soap that my dad would keep in the, uh, the garage because it was the tough stuff. And then she eventually brought me steel wool. <laughs> that's it, guys. Do what you gotta do. So I'm there, I'm exfoliating layers of skin off of my arm and leg. And now there's the problem with the clothes that I'm I can't get back in the car with tar covered clothes. And so I go back out, avoiding the parking lot that the resurface. Go to my car. I just recently moved. There's got to be something in the car. And so I, I go through the trunk and I find a shirt that was a giveaway at some sporting event. That was an XL. I can wear a small. This thing was like, I'm wearing a flag. Strong winds were taking it away. But I needed a clean shirt. I also found a pair of cargo shorts. Just so happened that cargo shorts were shorts I had not worn in about five years. And it turned out that I had gained a little bit of weight since I had last worn the shorts. So I lay down and I zip it up. Some of you ladies know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> you get it in there and now I've got like these a little too tight khaki shorts and this flag of a shirt. And my flip-flops were ruined. Well, the pastor had come home and the pastor was 6 foot 5, 280 pounds, size 14 shoes. He said, you didn't have a pair of my flip-flops. <laughs> so I got the clown shoes, the inappropriate shorts, and the flag shirt. And I changed in the bathroom of my new uh, place, and I was just going to go home. What a terrible day. And as I'm walking out of the bathroom and starting to go to my car, one of the staff members says, Hey, there's a staff meeting right now. You should come in and meet the rest of the staff. <laughs> so that's how I met the staff at my new job. That's how I started my new job. 
If there is a definition of epic fail, that day was it. And so I went the next day and I had to kind of address the elephant in the room. I met all the students and I was like, guys, you're going to hear this story from somebody. Might as well be me. Yesterday I fell into tar. And a lot of people make feather jokes, but that's not the only tar jokes there are. That was the start of my job at my uh, new workplace. But what happened is I worked there for six years. And it was six of the most amazing years that I'd ever spent. I formed some of the most rich relationships. We, we accomplished so many amazing things when I was there. But it started with an epic failure. And if I could go back and talk to my 18-year-old version of myself, I would tell him, be a failure. Class of 2014, be a failure. I hope that you fail. I hope you fail awfully. Because let me tell you what happens. When you fail, you find out who your friends are. And when you find out who your friends are, that's what gives you peace and confidence and the ability to move on. When you fail, you examine what went wrong. Some of the worst things that, that can ever happen to you in life is accidental success because you don't examine it. But when you fail, you do the post-mortem. You go through the evidence. You figure out what went wrong. And when you examine what went wrong, you grow and become a better person. When you fail, a lot of times it's because you take on more than you're able to handle. You're going for something great. And you say to yourself, I got this. And then you get a couple weeks in, you're like, I don't got this. <laughs> and you fail. But when you shoot for greatness, you make this world a better place. Your life is too short to act as if it does not have consequence. It's a class of 2014. May you fail. May you fail spectacularly. May you fail publicly. May you fail painfully. May you fail honestly. May you fail often. Because in your failure, this world will become great. Congratulations. Hunter Holsinger, top 12, Zulu. 
Shania Jones! <laughs> 
Nathan Allen. Samantha Rivera. Samantha Stoddard. Jason Kroll. <laughs> JD Rich. Mackenzie Harris. <laughs> Dylan Musel. Jacob Poulsen, Patrick Kumai, Taylor Ovington, Patrick Kumai, Cameron Cook, Gabe. Jacob Churches, Connors. Sean Springer. Oh, Tommy.
Thomas honors. Jacob Bealy.
Celeste Stevenson.
Jacob Porter. Jacob Brown.
Ellie Warner. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2014. Thank you. 